Okay, before we start, I'd like to mention that I don't play horror games because of scientific reasons. But for this video, I took one for the team and found you the best 15 free Steam horror games that you can play. These games are so good, I don't want to play any of them ever again. Starting off with the complex found footage, which is probably the most realistic game on this list, it's creepy, surreal, and liminal. The atmosphere is actually incredible. It reminds me of my bedroom, but my bedroom doesn't look this realistic. They captured the vibe of backroom so well, it's almost like real life footage. Continuing our list with my friend is a raven, which is like a weird gothic episode of Sesame Street. In it, you'll explore, solve puzzles, and probably question your life choices, all within a beautiful and eerie art style. Even though it is tagged as a horror game, I would call it a creepy atmospheric puzzle and you should surely give it a try. We will continue our list, but firstly, if you're looking for the best source of gaming news guides and reviews, you need to check out xgamer.gg. xgamer is your one-stop destination for all things gaming. With its user-friendly interface and extensive content, it's designed to help you enhance your gaming skills and knowledge. Stay informed with the latest news on popular games, ranging from Lethal Company to GTA 6 and more. And also, I sometimes use XGamer as a resource for my own content. They have an impressive network of more than 300 gaming news websites you can subscribe to, which keeps you up to date with the vast world of gaming. You can also read honest and insightful reviews from both media and users, which will help you decide which games are worth your time and money. And that's not all. XGamer also has dedicated sections for the games, so if you are interested in specific games, you can access them easily. You can quickly find guides, modes, and even social media posts about this specific games with ease so you don't have to waste time searching. Plus, if you want to stay up to date on particular games like GTA 6, you can follow them on XGamer and always be in the know. So if you need a website that has latest reviews, guides, and more, XGamer is the place to go. Link is in the description, and thanks to the XGamer team for sponsoring this video. This game is like if Finding Nemo had a crossover with Alien Isolation, and also Nemo had two legs, and instead you finding him, he finds you. You're stuck in a spaceship with a fish that clearly didn't skip leg day. Although it is not as scary as Alien Isolation, but it's bizarre and oddly terrifying in its way. After finishing this, you won't eat sushi for a couple of days. It's all fun and games until the toys start hunting you. Poppy Playtime is like wandering in an abandoned toy factory, except the toys here are less Toy Story and more Chucky. You have to complete the puzzles before getting a Homelander stare from a doll that's seen way too much. The game cleverly blurs the line between cuddly and creepy, turning the toy factory into a scene straight out of a horror movie. Great game, would love to never play it again. In the suits have gone mad, it's seemingly just another day at the office, but in reality, it's anything but ordinary. You work from 8 to 5, head home, take a shower, and yep, do it all over again the next day. So it's just like real life. This sounds already horrible, but on top of that, your boring office is haunted. You're walking around in a creepy office solving some puzzles here and there, and the creepy part is faceless suit-wearing ghosts are your co-workers. It's quite short, but it can easily scare you, so give it a try. Flicker Hopes is a charming, spooky little gem that feels reminiscent of Little Nightmares and Candleman's Love Child. It offers a quick 45-minute thrill ride that demands a one-sitting playthrough. Despite some clunky mechanics and transitions, its stealthy, candle-centric gameplay brilliantly shines, like a candle in the dark. Additionally, it has a claustrophobic, immersive vibe, like being a mouse in a maze, which adds to its allure. So it is a cute little game that you must certainly try. Mind's Eyes is pretty much like being in that super creepy house from every horror movie, except you're actually in it, and you've got company. You're trying to crack puzzles that make your brain hurt. All while this guy who keeps popping up like an annoying cousin at a family reunion. Constantly asking if you have games on your phone and totally messing with your escape plans. It's not a perfect game, but it does what it sets out to do pretty well. Spooky's House of Jump Scares is like a horror game that doesn't take itself too seriously. It is goofy, it is cute, and it is creepy. You've got these cute cardboard monsters and then real scary ones chasing you. You'll zip through floors, laughing one minute and getting scared in the next. If you're into anything that's a bit out there in horror games, give it a go. What really sets No More Room in Hell apart is that you can play it together with your friends. The game shines brightest when you're coordinating with your pals, making strategic decisions on the fly while navigating through hordes of zombies. But it's not just about mindlessly shooting zombies, you're also managing resources, fortifying positions, and sometimes making the tough call to leave that one newbie friend behind as bait. So it's fun, it's free, and it's best when played with friends. September 1999 is essentially the gaming equivalent of that friend who tells you they're outside your house when they haven't even left theirs. It just runs for 5 minutes and 30 seconds. 
If this game were a pizza, it would be just a single slice. It's got the classic setup, a camera, a creepy house, and you. It's got that blink and you'll miss it feel, similar to trying to read a text when your phone's at 1% battery. But despite all this, it's short, creepy, and surprisingly well-made. Dark Deception is like if Pac-Man went 3D and getting chased by monkey instead of ghosts. And this is not the funny monkey, but it is the scary monkey. The whole gig is running around grabbing these shiny things called shards, because apparently someone thought regular old dots were too 1980s. Graphically, it's pretty impressive, and the other gameplay elements are well executed too. Definitely worth giving it a go. We Went Back is a brief first-person puzzle light game that thrives on its atmosphere. It primarily revolves around escaping a spaceship and often falls into the category of a walking simulator. In terms of puzzles, it keeps things simple. They're mostly a walk in the park, although the final one might give you a bit of a challenge. The graphics are pretty good for a free game, but overall it is quite short, lasting about 50 minutes here and there. Other than that, it's a quite enjoyable game to play. This game uses the Source engine, the same engine that powered Half-Life 2, so it feels like you're stepping back into the familiar yet hauntingly alien world of Half-Life. It's a blend of survival, physics-based puzzles, and action-packed gameplay. As you delve deeper, the plot unravels, leaving you both intrigued and on edge. What's the deal with this Element 120, and why does it matter? So grab your crowbar and try this gem. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be trapped in an amusement park with murderous animatronics, you got some problems to fix, but you can enjoy yourself with Ultimate Custom Night during that time. What makes this game a so scary is the customization option. You're the master of your own nightmare. You get to choose which animatronics come after you, setting the stage for pure chaos. Want to be chased by a homicidal bear, a demonic chicken, and a music-loving puppet all at once? Seriously, man, go get some help. Imagine a game where you and your friends explore the mysterious and terrifying world of the SCP Foundation, filled with anomalies, creatures, and danger around every corner. That's SCP Secret Laboratory in a nutshell, and it's a multiplayer horror experience like no other. In this game, you'll find yourself in a secret underground facility, playing as either a member of the security team or one of the many dangerous SCP entities. It's a game of cat and mouse, trust and betrayal, and it's all wrapped up in an atmosphere of dread. Cry of Fear portrays the life of an average Swedish man in Stockholm. While the graphics aren't its strongest point due to its origins as a Half-Life 1 mod, the atmosphere, gameplay, and story are absolutely gorgeous. The small indie team could easily charge 15 bucks for this game, but they decided to release it for free to make you scared to look at your phone. Well, that's all the games we have for today. This was one of the hardest videos I've made in this channel, because I am not allowed to play horror games by myself. So drop a like and leave a comment if you found something to play in this list. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.